I want to show you how I have my charts set up in Thinkorswim for swing trading. And even if you don't want your charts to look like mine, this video is still going to go over all the basics that you need to know to get started in the platform. If you're totally new to it, it definitely can look a bit intimidating, but by the end of the video, you're going to know how to navigate all the basics that you need to know. All right, so as you can see, this is how I have my chart set up, and this isn't the only configuration that I have in here, but every night when I log on to scan for trades, this is basically what I'm looking at. And if you're totally new to this, your charts probably don't look like this, so let's just start from scratch. So to get started, let's just make sure that you're on charts up here at the top where my mouse is, and then also you're on charts over here on the right side of the screen. If any of these other buttons are selected, you can just deselect them. So we just have a chart for now. The first thing we want to do is make sure you're on the right time frame. So up here in time frame setup, click on this. You can see all the preset time frames that I have in here. We can customize the list. Uh, we'll add a time frame and the time interval is going to be the entire bottom of the chart, the amount of time that you can see. So for this, let's just pick 10 years and the aggregation period is how much one candle is going to add up to. So let's keep it on day, but you can pick anything you want. If you wanna see a weekly candle, a monthly candle. So we'll choose day, click add. It gets added into the list. You can rearrange your list, edit or delete. Okay, then we go back up here and we'll find our 10 year one day. So now this is pretty zoomed out, but if we wanna zoom into this at all, we can either use this button down here, the magnifying glass, or we can just click and drag and that'll zoom into the window selected. But for now, let's just go back to one year, one day, so we're already kind of zoomed in. Now let's go into the chart settings tab and clean up the appearance of the chart. So the first tab we're gonna start on is the general tab. And the only thing I'm gonna change on here is the overlap volume. I'll click apply and you can see that it gets the volume off of the chart so you don't have the volume bars running into your candlesticks. The next tab is the time axis tab. And if you wanna clean up these dashed lines on your chart, uncheck these two boxes for the year marking lines in expiration Friday, hit apply, and you can see that cleans up the chart a bit further. I just leave them on. And then you see how the chart's crammed all the way to the right side of the screen with no space? This expansion area is how you change that. So I enter somewhere between 25 and 50, hit apply, and that just gives you a little bit more room to see earnings dates or just so you're not crammed all the way to the right side of the screen. The favorite time frames tab is just another place to edit your time frames. The appearance tab is where you're really gonna be able to change the look and feel of your charts. So I like to click fill up. Then I come down to volume bars and I like to color as symbol ticks. And I like to get rid of this grid over here by my mouse to clean up the chart a little bit. So I uncheck that hit apply and you can see how that changed the chart there. On the equities tab, I make sure that I have show extended hours checked and highlight extended hours checked. And that's not gonna make a difference on the daily time frame, but if you get down into the hourly or the minute, that's gonna highlight the overnight hours so you can see that on the chart. So just to show you what that looks like, you can see that there's no difference on the daily chart, but if we go down into a lower time frame, say the one hour, you can see all these lighter colored bars. And this is just highlighting the overnight session and the darker area is just the normal day trading session. So if we go back into the chart settings, the options tab, I just have the same two boxes checked and the futures tab, I also have the same two boxes checked. That pretty much covers the chart settings tab. So now let's add in some moving averages or indicators and thinkorswim refers to them as studies. So if you click on this little beaker looking icon, this is the edit studies tab. And as you can see, there's a ton of studies already in here. And you can even import more from the internet. Let's start out with the moving average. So I'm gonna type in simple and I'm gonna double click it three times. So that's gonna add three simple moving averages to the chart. So you can see right now that they're all set to a nine moving average. So to change that, we're gonna click on the little settings icon. And this length is where you're gonna change the aggregation period for the moving average. So the first one we're gonna do is the 200. And then down here, you can change the color, the style. Let's change the color. Click okay, click okay. Second one we're gonna do is the 150. 
change the color. And the third one we're gonna do is the 50. Hit okay. Hit okay again, and you can see now we have moving averages on our chart. So if you remember from my charts earlier, I had a couple more, which are the exponential moving averages. So now let's type in EXP, and I'm gonna choose moving average exponential, and I will double click that twice. Go over to the settings, edit. First one I'm gonna put in is the 40. And now I'm gonna change the style of the line. So I don't want them all to be a solid line. I wanna be able to easily differentiate them. And I like this third one down, this dashed line. And I'm gonna change the color. Hit okay. Edit the last one. For this one, I'm gonna put in a 20 period. Once again, change the style of the line, third one down, change the color, hit OK, hit apply. Now you can see we have all our moving averages on the chart. So now if you like to use indicators, let's go ahead and add an indicator in and you're going to click back on the edit studies tab. And the first one I'm going to add is the MACD. So I'll double click that. Now, I don't change any of the default settings in the MACD, but if you would like to, you can click on the settings icon, hit OK, and that applies the MACD to the bottom of your chart. So the MACD is an oscillator, and it can help identify momentum and possible reversals. And that's a topic for another video, but just real quick, you can see when the signal line crosses here and the selling momentum starts picking up, it might indicate that a reversal is coming or has already started. This is a lagging indicator, but it's just something that you can add on to your analysis to help give you confirmation. So now let's add another indicator in that I like to use. So I'll go back into the Edit Studies tab and type in Stochastics. And the one that I'm gonna use is the Stochastic Full. So I'm gonna double click that. And this one I am gonna change the settings. So I'll click on the Settings tab. I'm gonna leave Overbought at 80, Oversold at 20. But the K period, I'm gonna change from 10 to five. And the D period, I'm gonna change from 10 to three. Price H remains at high. And then the only other thing I'm gonna change is the average type from simple to exponential. And what these settings are gonna do is just basically speed up the oscillator. So I'm gonna hit okay, hit okay again. So what you can use the stochastics indicator for is to help identify overbought or oversold conditions. And you can see it's just an oscillator that goes up and down. And when it gets over the 80 line, it's considered overbought and under the 20 line is considered oversold. And you can see it just kind of rides with the waves of the price action of the stock. And that's really all I'm gonna put on my chart as far as indicators, cause I don't like to clutter it up too bad. Now, if you wanna add a drawing like a support or a resistance line or a trend line, you can click down on your scroll button and this little menu is gonna pop up. And this price level icon will let you draw straight lines. So say I wanna mark this resistance up here on Apple. We'll double click that. And now you have a line up there. You can right click that, edit properties, give it a name, uh, dial in the price better if that's not exactly the price you wanted to have it set at. You can change the color of that line. And if you just wanna draw a trend line, just click down on your scroll wheel again and choose trend line and then you can click wherever you wanna click. Add that in. If you wanna pan on your charts, click down on your scroll wheel again, click pan. Now you can move it around. If you wanna go back to the mouse button, that will let you zoom in with the window. And then you can come back down to the magnifying glass to zoom back out. There's also other tools in this menu, such as Fibonacci retracements and click them if you like to use those. You can also right click it and hit remove drawing to get rid of any drawings that you don't want anymore. You can actually save different drawing sets in here too. So if you click on the drawing tools tab up here and create new drawing set, it'll give you a blank slate to start on. And that way if you have some drawings that you wanna maybe refer to in the future but you don't want them on your chart right now, 
If you separate the two tabs out, you can clean up your charts for the meantime. So now let's go up to the main application settings tab, which is all the way at the top where it says setup. And I'm gonna click on application settings. And the only thing I wanna go over in here is on the system tab. And I'm gonna make sure my quote speed is set at real time, no delay. And that's just gonna make sure I'm getting the most up-to-date, accurate price information. I'm gonna click apply settings. Now on the left side of the screen, you can see I have a watch list built and this is just my main watch list. And it's just full of a bunch of stocks that I accumulated over the years that I wanna pay attention to. A lot of them have high liquidity. But I start the top of my list off with the main market components like indices. You can see I have futures up here, SPY, QQQ, the Russell 2000, TNX and TLT, which are bonds, GXC and FXI, which is China. Then I have the heavy hitters like Apple, Netflix, Tesla. So if you wanna add a watch list in, and if you don't already have one showing here, you can click on this plus sign down at the bottom left and hit add gadget. And I'm gonna choose watch list. But let's just say I wanted to start with a blank slate. I'll click on it. And I'll click create new watch list. And let's just give it a name. Click save. Now I'm gonna click over here on symbol and you can type in whatever name you wanna watch. So Apple, Google, Meta, and you can just add whatever you wanna to add to it. So as you can see, I have a bunch of watch lists added onto mine. And these are actually scans that I have built in and they update every single day if a uh, stock ends up hitting the parameters of my scan. And I use this to scan for different trade setups. The scan tool is a really powerful part of Thinkorswim that you can use to narrow down the stocks that you're searching through. And I would honestly have to make a separate video on this. So if it's something you're interested in, please let me know in the comments. The scan tab can be found up here towards the top. And as you can see, there's just a ton of different parameters that you can enter in here to narrow down your search. And like I said, it, it would really have to be a separate video to go over all this. Just to give you guys a couple extra tips here, if you click on the trade tab, this is where you're gonna find your options. So if this isn't already opened up, open up option chain, and you're gonna see the different expiration dates. So if you click on one, this is your options chain. Over here on the right is your puts. On the left is your calls. You can change the layout of this. How I have mine set up is what I like to see, implied volatility, open interest, extrinsic, theta, delta, mark, bid, and ask. If you click on layout right here, this is where you can change the layout of your options chain. If you look back at the top and choose the analyze tab, there's all these different subcategories here but the main two that I use is fundamentals. If it's a new company that I don't know about, I'll read the company profile here. But the risk profile tab is the main one that I use. So let's go back to the options chain and just make a quick spread and see how that looks. So I'm gonna choose to buy a call. I'm gonna hold in the control key, sell a put, and I'm gonna buy another put. And you can see this is just a custom spread. Now if I right click on the whole thing, I'm gonna click Analyze Trade, and that's gonna automatically bring us back to the Analyze tab on the Risk Profile tab. And you can see this is the profit and loss chart of that option spread. And this is really useful in analyzing option spreads and setting up a trade. This bottom line down here is the PNL at expiration. And this line up at the top is either the current date or whatever date you have it set at. So if I click down here and I just keep increasing the date, you can see the closer that we get to expiration, the more that this line moves towards this line. And then down here at the bottom left of the chart is your P&L. So you can see the max loss of this trade is $673. And with this option spread, the profit's infinite. So if price went up to say 210, you can see that my P&L would roughly be about $1,400. I'm gonna remove myself for a second so you can see this other icon. So you see this little settings icon down in the bottom right? If you click on that, this will allow you to adjust the volatility. So as you know in options, volatility affects the pricing of options. So let's just change it to 20%. And you can see the P&L line jumps up from that volatility adjustment. 
So that's another thing you can analyze while you're looking at your option spreads. So another thing I wanna show you real quick is, is if you get your charts to a way that you like and you wanna save that, click on this little window icon up here and you're gonna click save grid as. So you can name this whatever you want and then just click save. I already have a bunch of different setups in here and this is for different computers, different trading styles. So I'll show you my day trading setup. I'll click on the eight chart and you can see I have a bunch of charts in here. And then if I wanna go back to my swing trading one, all I gotta do is click on it again and I'm back to my swing trading chart. So you can really edit this however you want. If you wanna see four charts, just click back on the window icon, select four charts and enter in whatever symbol you wanna see. Now you will have to go back into your settings and edit each chart to however you wanna see it. If you wanna see other information within the chart, you can click on these little icons in between the charts. So if I click on level two, you'll see the level two data for the stock or instrument that you have chosen. You can pick the time and sales. Now the market's currently closed, so there's nothing populated in here, but that would be all the active orders hitting the market. The trade button, if you're gonna use Thinkorswim to actually trade, you can buy or sell right here. Also, if you look at this little symbol next to the ticker, the symbol link, if you click on that and it's currently unlinked, that means you can type in whatever you want to right here and it won't change anything else on your chart. But say I select the first link, that is gonna connect it to my watch list. So whatever I click on will automatically change. But if you just want a bunch of different stocks uh, viewable at one time, you can just unlink them and then type in whatever you want. So one more thing I wanna show you is if you have multiple monitors and you wanna fill them all up with charts, if you go up to the top right here at the show actions menu, click on that and hit detach. That's gonna detach a copy of your charts that you can edit however you want and drag it around and put it on different monitors. So if you want this one to show, say six different charts, you can click six. If you just want it to be one, just click on one. And I actually have three different monitors hooked up to my computer. So this is something that I use, it's pretty useful. I really hope this video helps. There's a ton more to go over in the platform, but I wanted to keep the video as short as possible and just hit the basics. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. And if you have any video suggestions, anything you wanna see broken down further, also let me know and I'll do my best to get it out. If you found value in this, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel and I'll see you next time.